Today, I wanna to give you three key takeaways for coders from the 2018 Medicare Hospital Inpatient Perspective Payment System. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. And today, I just wanna give you some nuggets to put into your uh, toolkit, being a certified marketable coder that you are aspiring to be, that will assist you in that endeavor. So we're gonna talk about the three key takeaways for coders from the fiscal year 2018 Medicare Hospital Inpatient Perspective Payment System or IPPS and Long-Term Acute Care Hospital or LTCH Perspective Payment System or PPS. Yes, it's an alphabet soup. <laughs> and this is the final rule that came out and I'll put the link below. So the final rule that, it's a final rule that updates Medicare payment and policies when patients are discharged from hospitals. It goes into effect and it's effective from October 1, 2017 to September 30th, 2018. Some brief history and background on the IPPS and LTCH PPS if you're not familiar. So CMS pays acute care hospitals with a few exceptions specified in the law for inpatient stays under the IPPS and long-term care hospitals under the LTCH PPS. Under these two payment systems, CMS sets base payment rates prospectively for inpatient stays based on the patient's characteristics, including diagnosis, and that's where we come in, coding those diagnoses, and severity of illness. We also come in with that if we're coding for evaluation and management. A hospital receives a single payment for the case based on the payment classification, Medicare severity diagnosis related groups, or the MSDRGs under the IPPS and Medicare severity long-term care diagnostic diagnosis related groups, or again, some more <laughs> abbreviations or acronyms, the MSLTC DRGs under the LTCH PPS that are assigned at discharge. So let's get right into those key uh, takeaways. Number one, changes to the payment rates. Under IPPS, acute care hospitals will receive a 1.2% increase in Medicare operating rates in fiscal year 2018. The hospital will only receive this rate if they report quality data and are meaningful users of electronic health records. So there is a little caveat there for, for those facilities. Number two, hospital acquired conditions or HAC reduction program. The HAC reduction program helps to encourage hospitals to reduce the incidence of hospital acquired conditions by requiring the secretary to impose a payment reduction of 1% for applicable hospitals that rank in the worst performing quartile. In the fiscal year 2018, IPPS or LTCH PPS final rule, CMS is finalizing two changes to the existing hack reduction program policies. Those are specifying the dates of the data period used to calculate hospital performance for the fiscal year 2018 IPPS or LTCH PPS final rule. So number one is specifying the dates of the data period used to calculate hospital performance for the uh, fiscal year 2020 hack reduction program. And number two, 
updating the extraordinary circumstance exception policy. In addition, CMS is also responding to comments received on adoption of additional measures accounting for social risk factors and inclusion of disability and medical complexity in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention National Healthcare Safety Network measures. Number three, hospital inpatient quality reporting or the IQR program. In the fiscal year 2018, IPPS or LTCH PPS final rule, CMS is refining two previous, previously adopted measures and they're refining them as follows. Number one, they're replacing the pain management questions in the hospital consumer assessment of healthcare providers and systems, or another acronym, HCA HPS. <laughs> and it's a survey to, um, and they're sort of changing some of the questions to focus on the hospital's communications with patients about the patient's pain during the hospital stay. Beginning with uh, surveys administered in January 2018. In response to stakeholder feedback, public display of uh, hospital performance data on these refined questions will be delayed for one year so that hospitals may gain more experience with the refined questions. So they're giving them a little lag time to make sure that they're getting everything in play. Number two, they are going to uh, update the risk adjustment methodology used in the stroke 30 day mortality measure to include the use of stroke severity codes. And these are based on the National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale. So CMS is adopting the hospital-wide, all-cause, unplanned readmission hybrid measure as a voluntary measure for the uh, calendar year 2018 reporting period that uses both claims and electronic health record data for measure calculation. CMS received public comments on potential new quality measures for future inclusion in the hospital IQR program, accounting for social risk factors in the program and confidential and public reporting of measure rates for certain measures stratified by patients, dual eligibility status which are being taken under consideration for development of policies and future rulemaking. So there you have the three key takeaways for coders from the IPPS and LTCH prospective payment system for fiscal year 2018. Do you know the connection between the present on admission guidelines and the hospital acquired conditions? Give me a yes or no in the comment section. I may put together a video with the responses and give you a shout out. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel if you have found value in the information that we have provided and shared today. This is Clarice Warner the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. Reminding you to be safe, be kind, don't wish for it, work for it. Until next time, take care.